We're back talking about hope when it comes to the field of curing cancer, and we're back with Dr. Gerson, Dr. Sharma, and Dr. Wolchuk, oncologists that are on the, the cutting edge of their field when it comes to immunotherapy. And just to sum that up quickly for our viewers, when you have cancer, essentially cancer turns off your immune system, so your body can't fight it. And so what immunotherapy does is that it helps turn your immune system back on to go ahead and try to tackle that cancer. Dr. Gerson, can you tell us a little bit about how did you give someone immunotherapy? How does it work? Well, uh, the medications are oral medications or, and or their antibodies, and one can receive them intermittently as with other uh, treatments that we use for cancer, and they can be given alone or they can be given in combination with other conventional chemotherapy drugs or even uh, with radiation therapy. But there's a huge amount of research going on still about how to properly give the medications at the, both the right doses and to avoid toxicity. Dr. Wilchuk, it sounds a lot different than chemotherapy, and when you, when you see someone that has been through chemotherapy, you can clearly see how it affects their body. What's the side effect of some of these drugs? The side effects of these medicines is clearly different than chemotherapy. Um, the side effects can really be um, characterized as being inflammation of various organs in the body, most commonly either um, the intestines or the thyroid gland, sometimes the skin or the liver. Um, these side effects um, sometimes are not evident to the patient because they just represent uh, abnormal blood tests, um, but some patients do describe significant fatigue, um, can have some gastrointestinal symptoms, and uh, when side effects occur, it's important that people share this information with their doctors, uh, and we often use immune suppressing medicines to try to control them. Interesting. Dr. Sharma, you point out that this, sometimes this works incredible for some people, sometimes it, it doesn't work for others. Sometimes a person goes on and off these drugs, but according to what you've seen, even if they come on and off the drugs, sometimes there's lasting effects. Absolutely. These responses can be durable even after we stop the treatment. And that's because, again, these agents are treating the immune system. They're not targeting the tumor cells, per se. And by treating the immune system, the immune system is the same system that has these cells circulating in your body for the rest of your life. And if they learn how to attack cancer, they remain there and they have what we call memory or memory cells that can then start that whole response again if they need to. So, Dr. Gerson, what about cost? What about access? Because I'm sure there's going to be folks that are listening to this thinking, wow, this sounds really great for my, you know, me or a family member or somebody. How, how do you get immunotherapy? So given the fact that these are new medications and there's been billions of dollars of research that's gone into them, they are expensive. And that's why the FDA has only approved for a certain number of indications. And a, a patient needs to go to their physician to determine whether or not their indication is appropriate. But we all agree that there's plenty to be done and there are many clinical trials around the country that are opportunities for patients for new therapies in the immune space. And it sounds like there's a few different cancers that Dr. Wolchuk, that perhaps are more responsive than others, and maybe we can talk about that in, in just a moment, but I have to ask you all a question. Is this, when you, when you think about your work, do you believe that this is the cure for cancer, Dr. Wolchuk? I think that this is one approach to try and control cancer in a very durable way. Um, cure is a really emotionally charged word and we don't really know precisely how to define it. But I think that immunotherapy either alone or in combination with other approaches you know, can result in durable disease control um, in a significant number of people with some diseases. The challenge that we now have, the research areas that we focus on, are how to expand that. Mm. Dr. Sharma, cure or maybe not? You know, I, I agree that cure is an emotionally charged term, but so is the word cancer. So I want to throw cure in there against cancer. I think we need to start thinking of this in hopeful ways that maybe we can cure some patients, and we have seen some patients now that we've considered cure, actually. So I think immunotherapy is another pillar. By itself, I don't think it can do it, but it's one of the pillars of radiation, chemotherapy, surgery, molecularly targeted agents. I think we now have lots of different agents we can use together to head towards cure. I only have a quick uh, 20 seconds here, Dr. Gerson. Your thoughts on this? So I think we can cure some patients, not all. And I've been doing stem cell transplants for lymphoma and leukemia. We cure those patients, and we realize now it's all about the immune therapy they're receiving as part of their stem cell transplant. It's a really a pleasure to have you all on the program. We know that you're busy, and taking time to do television may not be a top priority. <laughs> but it gives us the opportunity to really learn about something incredible that's happening and to thank you as well for your work. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Glad to. Thank you. So